Newton's first law of motion is very simple. If something is at rest, it will remain at rest. Or if something is in motion, it will remain in motion until acted on by another outside force. In other words, this law says an object won't change velocity until the force is applied. They see me rolling, they hating, patrolling and trying to kiss me riding dirty, trying to kiss me riding dirty, trying to kiss me riding dirty. Due to the first law, inertia keeps Michael moving forward when the skateboard suddenly comes to a halt, launching him forward. Okay, here's a simple problem to understand inertia and Newton's first law. If an astronaut lets go of a wrench in space, and the velocity of the wrench is 5 meters per second the moment the astronaut lets go of it, the forces of gravity of any planet or sun are not significant. What would be the speed of the wrench after 10 years? Well, we are given that the speed is 5 meters per second. And since there is no forces in space, including friction and gravity, like we just said, it will remain at a constant 5 meters per second. Now, at 100 years, there is still nothing that could have impacted the wrench. So the laws of inertia state that there will be no change in velocity. And same for a thousand. It will remain at five thousand meters per second. Newton's second law basically states that acceleration is directly proportional to force and inversely proportional to mass. This means the more force is applied, the bigger the acceleration, and the more mass there is, the smaller the acceleration. These two balls are of different masses and are hit with the same amount of force. The one with more mass didn't go as far, showing it has less of an acceleration, showing that mass and acceleration are inversely proportional. As you can see for the balls of the same mass, more force equals more acceleration, showing a direct proportion. A shopper pushes a full shopping cart with a mass of 45 kilograms. Starting from rest, she sees the last of the free samples and accelerates toward them at 0.8 meters per second squared. She did get the sample, but what was the force applied by her on the shopping cart if friction is ignored? We can solve this equation using Newton's second law, force equals mass times acceleration. Now if we plug in 45 kilograms for mass and 0.8 meters per second squared, for acceleration, we can solve to get the force applied to be 36 newtons. Newton's third law states that for every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. This means that in every interaction, there is a pair of forces acting on the two interacting objects. The size of the forces on the first object is the same as the size of the forces on the second object, and the directions are opposite. Forces always come in pairs, equal and opposite action-reaction force pairs. Newton's cradle is a perfect example of the action-reaction pairs of the third law. When the ball in one end is pulled back and then let go, it swings into the other balls. The ball on the opposite end then swings up with the equal force to that of the first ball. The force of the first ball causes an equal and opposite reaction in the ball at the other end. The free fall acceleration of any object near the surface of the earth is 9.8 meters per second. How much force does a 50 kilogram man exert on the earth? In order to start solving this problem, we need to use Newton's second law, which is force equals mass times acceleration. Because we know the mass and the acceleration, we can find the force on the man. 50 kilograms times 9.8 meters per second will give you 490 newtons. However, that is the force on the man. We need to find the force the man exerts on the earth. Because of Newton's lo third law, we know that the forces exerted are opposite and equal. So he exerts 490 newtons 
from the earth away from the earth away from the center of the earth which you could consider negative 